Good afternoon, I'm Nick D for VIS. Welcome to episode 16 of So Far From God. Last time we left off, uh, we finished our uh, the Kabuki effect, but now we have this massive uh, tree. Well, massive is relatively speaking, because I think they're all like 14 day focuses. But let's get as the sun sets. President Lopez Mateos is driven by many things. Uh, love for his countrymen, the ideas of the revolution, a desire to preserve independence, though when boiled down to its most basic form, Mateo shares the intrinsic motivation that drives many like him. He seeks to be remembered, to chisel his legacy into endless cliff face of human existence, a legacy that can stand the test of time for generations to come in Mexico. The achievements of energy nationalization and the massive expansion the automotive industry are monumental, though Mateos must not let up in his old age, lest his desire to cement himself as one of, Mex of the greats uh, falls short. Poverty, land distribution, Mexico's place in the world stage, all issues that must be tackled to fulfill Mateos' dream uh, to become great will get on reflection. Uh, but up in flames. Oh. Let's see, El Tapado. Let's see who he's probably going to choose. We, we tanked it sort of... Okay, it's average. It's average. So it's not going to be Ordaz, it's not going to be uh, Madraza, so it's going to be Salinas. Uh, the aide knocked on Salinas' door, received no response, and his hand to report on the economic downturn caused by Navas' protesters, laying wait for the secretary to read. Knock, the aide knew that Secretary Salinas was inside, and put his ear to the door to see how its boss was doing. Heavy breathing was heard, followed by a mildly panicked voice. Could you please repeat that again, Antonio Salinas said, his professional demeanor slipped away. Did I hear something about warming up? Uh, to Ortez before it's too late. You're a weather vane, huh? You spineless coward. Um, the sound of a phone slamming was heard, startling the aide who immediately walked away. Now uh, was not the time. The officer, uh, the office spun around Selena's head. Its walls crumbled to make a way, make way for his fears, penetrating past his collected and calm guides and stabbing his ego, twisting the knife. The Nava affair had blown up in his face, taking his chance of getting into Los Pinos along with it. His perfect plan had gone a. a Arai, uh, Arai. The uh, how, how can I mispronounce that? But um, a light pout left its mouth. But the moment of weakness quickly passed. It would not end like this. Calm down, secretary. He reassured himself, his mind contemplating how best to secure his legacy and the country had served for so long. And all at once, Lena's realized how little had actually changed. He had no shot at being Lopez Mateo's successor before the Aloysians crisis. His enemies were bound to slip up again. He just needed to be ready to exploit their next mistake. His mind raced, new ideas already formulating in his head. The long game, the long game has just begun. There's always another plan. Uh, the Kabuki crisis will continue to evolve. Uh, El Tapado is chosen. The president will inform them soon. Uh, it's gonna be us. I, I promise you guys. Um, we could do some relief right here. Or, uh, let's see. Let's, I want to see how stimulation is going. Moderately active. Slightly active. Sli slightly inactive. Uh, let's get some Northwest going. Let's sponsor some industry. Let's get that stimulation going. Um, coup in Vietnam. But all the pretty horses. Uh, Lopez Mateos raised a nice bottle of piquet to his lips as he watched the horses canter in the field across the ranch house. Though the arid climate of uh, Nueva Leon was not quite to his liking, the Norteno cuisine was an another matter entirely. He took another bite of his cabrito and smiled up at Salinas. My compliments to the chef, he said. Let him know there's a job in the capital if you ever feel like parting with him. Um, Salinas tipped the rim of his black co cowboy hat appreciatively. He would refuse even if you asked, I'm afraid. He feels that leaving the north would remove something from his food, turn it into the pale imitation for the palates of Mexico City. Is that so? asked Lopez Mateos. Some would say we may be heading in similar in a similar direction. Headed toward some distant metropolis which will swallow us up and strip us bare. Will that become of us? Uh, do you reckon us? Uh, do you reckon? Do you see those? Asked Salinas, pointing at the horses. Their ancestors once roamed these lands wild and free, until one day vaqueros and fences and civilization come and brought them to that to an end. If they had pushed on deep into the unfamiliar, the mustangs may have lived, may have remained so. Instead, they pranced as they always had, now an enclosed space for our amusement. For Mexico to thrive, to avoid... Uh, being enclosed by our neighbors, we must press on in a firm, uncompromising uncom direction, if we f even if we fear the monsters that guard the way. An interesting philosophy, said Lopez Mateos. I hope it will pan out in the six years to come, Your Excellency. 
Yeah, he chose us. He chose us. He chose Salinas, which is us. By glorious aftershock. Um, Lopez Mateo's lips met with a glass, indulging in liquid fervor of victory. Mexican uh, wine, but he was unable to swallow. Every second that stagnant puddle of wine remained in his mouth, introduced to a rising sense of guilt. Uh, it became impossible to swallow for Lopez Mateo's throat, having became swollen from mere thoughts. He shook his head and slowly spit the wine out at a nearby sink. His eyes were drawn to the puddle of wine, a red splatter like blood. My presidency, Lopez Mateos thought, was made up of massacred blood uh, spat out. He could see the reflections in the wine, hundreds of innocents slain or wounded, the pursuit of peace and prosperity. He could see the vague bodies of all the workers who had been crushed alongside the railway strikes. Another reflected face was that of Ruben Yar. Yaramillo, a revolutionary that Lopez Mateos sent his thugs after to execute. Uh, Lopez Mateos was just like him. A uh, revolutionary brigand, together with his, with his late comrade, Germán del Campo, the president back then, a, prede a part of the predecessor of the PRI, had sent federal agents after him and his comrade, which, who had happened to support José Falscolenos' candidacy. Germán was slain, just like Yar Yaramillo, but Lopez Mateos survived. Um... Lopez Mateos lowered himself out of the sink and prayed in silence. I never wanted this, and neither would he have. Maybe nobody has. Fate corrupts the dearest of us. But an iron hand on the tiller. Gentlemen, the so-called uh, Kabuki crisis has passed. A round of precise applause as succeeded Governor and Division General Antonio Neva Castillo's statement. Surrounding a table of refreshments and unopened folders gathered a group of men new... Uh, in a mix of military and civilian dress. In short of time, we have already shown the people of Puebla the mer merits of our administration. With some uh, common sense cost cutting and revamped policing of disrupted activities, the economy will be back on track in no time. Uh, speaking of that, let me check if we got any projects. Okay, not available. Just making sure. But gentlemen, the mission is not complete. There's still much to accomplish. Castillo tugged on his military jacket before walking stiffly to a screen. He pointed to an anxious, anxiously waiting lieutenant on cue the young uh, soldier um, activated projector, which projected an image onto the screen next to Castillo. Times are changing. The economy of Mexico is a completely different beast than it was 10 years ago. The Kabuki crisis showed that uh, Pueblo must industrial... Uh, oh wait, the Kabuki crisis showed us that. Uh, Puebla must modernize if it wishes to be an integral part of the economy. Castillo gave a slight nod and the projected image clicked on the diagram. My staff and I have been working hard to draft an all-inclusive plan that touches every aspect of the economy. Um, with a firm enough hand... Uh, where, where's Puebla? Puebla? Somewhere right here. Okay, first try. Let's see. First, first try. First try. Let's see where I, 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 I've, I know where it is. I know where it is, guys. Please, I need, to, I need to trust the plan. I'm gonna find it. I'm gonna find it real quick. Not there. Not there. Oh, first try. Look at that. I'm, I'm good. Um, uh, another round of applause. Just where Castillo had planned. You are all here because you have uh, a part to play in the plan. Uh, some of you under me. Some of you work under me directly. Others are friends. And associates, there's a lot to be done, many contracts to be fulfilled, and I will need these jobs done by the only men I trust most. And of course, you will be paid for hard labor. Castillo smiled and waited for another applause. The men laughed and cheered to a promising future. I have a feeling that's not going to be. Uh, but on reflection, and let me first uh, reveal his smiling uh, face first. Uh oh, seems like we're going to get a mechanic. Yeah. The battle of the for the nation. Lopez Mateo's mighty finger, El Dadazo, points with clarity and finality to his successor. A revelation of un utmost importance to Mexico's political class. But El Tapato does not uh, com yet command the attention of the public, which remains focused on the fallout from the twin Kabuki and Nava crises. Um, this will be changed through joint events, directed press coverage, and leaks of flattering biographical details that Mexican people will come to know and love El Topado. His vision will be packaged in appealing morsels, and its qualifications drilled in every mind. Um, when July 5th arrives, every citizen will know the foremost name on their ballot. And when, July, and when December 1st arrives, they will, uh, they will recognize their new president's authority. Um, but in the closing hours of His Excellency the President's office, one of Adolfo Lopez 
uh, Mateo's fleet of assistants and aides had placed a box with two lines of ribbon tied around it during a meeting with some fleeting state official. Um, when the man had left and Mateos had finished reviewing the paperwork said man had given him, he unwrapped the box. It was from Eva. The card inside simply said, Dear Husband. The object accompanying it was a framed photograph of Mateos from his time as Secretary of Labor and Social Welfare. Mateos gave the photograph a good view. His face was less wrinkly, his hairline a good deal closer to his eyes, uh, to his eyebrows than the back of his head. Uh, when he looked into the eyes of a man almost a decade younger than him, he saw ambition. Ambition that carried him to the very chair that he sat in right now. He placed the photograph on his desk. Um, he had, if he looked back, he was lost. He know he had known in that moment. He raised his arm to swear the oath of office to the United Mexican States on December first, nineteen fifty-eight. Yet the proud future evaded him. Uh, one more uh, year of presidency. He was proud of his work, and his countrymen were proud of him too. Of the diligence Mateo had shown to him uh, during his tenure. Apologies. Um, he viewed it in a slightly skewed way. Mateos had saved the world. Yet he still uh, felt unsure. He felt it all slipping away. Why, invisible evil presence ha hid in his thoughts. A presence he wished he could uh, confront and defeat. Mateos feared it, fearing that he would uh, turn. That if he turned to see what he dreaded most, the only thing he would uh, see would be his own eyes, his own face. That would not do. He called an aide to bring coffee and for a political advisor, whichever was closest. There was work to be done, old wounds to be soon shut. Uh, Mexico awaited the breath of fresh air. Those promised every six years on December 1st. Yet they barely knew the name of the man that would pre replace his own. What, what that name represented and how it would change their lives. Mateos, the president, did not have much time left. He would be damned if uh, in a year from now Mateos, the man, regretted that time being wasted. The final battle begins. Um, with the identity of El Tapado revealed, the battle for the nation decision category has been unlocked. So, let's check that out. So, the battle for the nation, uh, El Tapado, uh, remains elusive. Select a, fur a furnace. Perception. Organize a rally. Hold up. Construct legacy of the great human president. Perception of El Tapado. Uh, decreases in preparation. Uh, paint the new revolutionary face. Prevents perception pre pre preparations from being subtracted upon the completion of the current focus. Only one preparation can be chosen from the effect until the current focus is complete. Uh, let's do this. Sell El Tapado. Uh, so we could do this. And uh, cut, cut ribbon, kiss babies. Um, let's let's do this. Uh, subtract it from this campaign upon the completion of the current focus. Only one campaign could be chosen for this fact. Okay, I think um, let's do let's do this. So twenty five, twenty five, and five, and we're gonna get five more. So we gotta we gotta do that. It's a cool mechanic. I I really don't hope I really hope I don't mess this up. But uh, what does what's this? DFS, target faction power. Uh, let's target these guys. Workers, maybe. That. Where did the Where did the other screen go? Oh, look at that. Uh, legacy preparation. Available for reselection in two days. What? Costs uh, five. Uh, we could do, maybe let's decrease cronyism. Oh. Uh, yeah, we need we need perception. Loyalty. Oh, the peasantry do not like us. They do not like us one bit. Let's organize a rally. I feel like there's something like I shouldn't be selecting them all. Preparations. Let's do this. Oh. But water, water everywhere. Where once there was a road, there was now a murky brown eddying current toward a water, lurching forward like a dying beast. When at its depths and along its surface, the pieces of the towns and villages floated in bizarre, uh, bizarre, uh, peace. Logs, paintings, bodies, and even whole homes rose from their foundations. Gray clouds rolled in the sky with the trickling rain, reminding those under them that the flood was just the beginning. 
A few people looked out the windows, barely perched above the water, desperately, fruitlessly holding back the tide. A few lay on the mountainside with nothing to their name but soaked clothes and the assurance of loss. Alongside the great stream were huts of buildings, many of their occupants long ago having fled, whether into the jungles or mountains or simply higher areas within the decimated village. The church atop the hill hung over the town as the only building unaltered. The villagers thanked God and the Virgin for that. Before beyond that the village Beyond that village, across mountains and forests, the great stream continued to expand and thinned and grew again. Many boats traveled along it, some intended vessels, others simply pieces of wood stitched together by the desperate. They occasionally floated by, uh, by other uh, destroyed towns were joined by new refugees. Some headed east towards the foothills, while their drivers declared they had connections in Mexico City. Others to the swamp Villa Hermosa, or other cities uh, to beg amidst the ruins, beseeching long-departed uh, politicians for succor. Uh, the southeast is sinking, and Mexico City must raise it, lest other things besides uh, water uh, begin to saturate the heads of the region's people, yet not a drop to relieve their suffering. So this will decrease our stability and GDP. Uh, but into the waves. The president's office was dead silent, but Dresdo kept on reading the reports about the floods batter battering the south. Line by line, he read casualty estimates, reports of an entire villas swept away, and the stories of heroism happening in spite of the public services in his home state of Tabasco. Uh, putting it down for a moment, he struggled to vocalize his feelings on the matter. I remember hearing that the public works officials, the meteorologists, saying this was a matter of time. He looked as if finding something to uh, pin uh, blame on other than himself, and only the proper infrastructure was in place. The rural areas would not be so vulnerable, something like this. Madrazo Lopez Mateos interrupted the distressed governor, and after the pass, it's irrelevant now. Uh, the president spoke with paternalistic inflection. This is your state, Madrazo. You know what you must do. You cannot do anything but reading reports and shifting uh, blame hundreds of miles away. Um, of course, Your Excellency, the governor straightened himself out. I was just about to leave for my flight in a few hours. Anyhow, Machoso tosses the report to his son and stands up. No use in reading uh, that any longer. It's time for that I see for myself. With that, he begins to leave the room, although it's stopped by uh, Lopez Mateos once more. Wait, Madrazo, the governor turns around. Good luck. I think if we went with him, uh, if we went with him, that would, uh, like, make him the, like boost up his successor score or something i don't know if that's even in the factor because i think he might have made up his mind already uh but he flipped the page tabasco with the help of relief efforts coming from mexico city will be rebuilt though it will take longer than initially expected carlos madrazo the leader of the response is already um being praised for his quick and timely aid despite concern um for supplies at the beginning of a side skate from his mouth before looking up from the paper. No doubt they are happy for aid, if only those back in the city thought the same too, Madrazo commented before looking back down to the paper. Well, Stafford jumped in, having uh, been the one to give the paper to the governor. If you want to, we can. No, no, Madrazo set the paper down. Again, this is what we'll have to work with. We won't be getting anything else besides what has been given to us. Surely we can do something to make the government realize what, what we've done here. The staffer shuffled some papers around uh, before uh, finding the correct one and placing it in front of him. All they gave us was a thank you, saying that the government will always look after its people, and then just leave it at that. We have always gathered a great amount of support by helping her, while well, I absolutely despise those and the soft cushions reducing life uh, to numbers on a piece of paper. We must show that we have defied uh, expectations in our efforts against all odds. Carlos brushed the staff away, picking up where he'd left off on the paper. You get the cards dealt to you, and all you can do is play them. So this will uh, increase the GDP, just... We lost, we took a hit right here. Let's see, uh, we do any Telpato. I don't know what these little, like, like, balls right here represent. Oh, preparation. Legacy preparation. So, hmm. Uh, reselection. I don't really want to, maybe we could do this. Actually, we're about to get some legacy, uh, perception, I mean. So let's uh, let's do this. Three. Uh, let's cut ribbons. Kiss bait. Oh no, we don't have enough political power. Uh, but this will give us some political power. Hmm. <sighs> but revealing the smiling face, we'll get the the final ride now. 
As high noon fades into twilight of Lopez Mateo's sexennial, the shadows grow long. The president held himself to be the leftmost within the Constitution, an opportunity to reinvigorate an ebbing revolution. Perhaps the structures of power were too tight, and perhaps the man too flawed for so monumental a task. Necessary or not, uh, Mexico's great hopes leave a trail of corpses behind them. But that will not, cannot be a sole legacy. In this last year, uh, Lopez Mateos will couple social reforms with efforts to soften the PRI's heaven heavy hand. Political prisoners who no longer pose a threat will walk free. Uh, enemies will, with, will be co-opted rather than crushed. Perhaps there will be enough to exchange a black hat for a white one on this last ride. And uh, after this, we'll get molds the insti mold the institution. And I think uh, we'll... I think we'll drive away the specters. We'll try to get like the peasants to actually care about us. Um, look at that. We can excise the atom. <laughs> uh, but let's do the final ride. And the International Olympic Committee. So close to Adolfo. One more day. The president takes a mean gander at his exhausted figure in the mirror in the hotel bathroom. Uh, his normally youthful eyes finally begin to crack under the weight of the many trips undertaken in the past months. Apologies. Um, his head pounding from all the stress had led up to this count the endless steel brokering, uh, diplomatic speak, and countless hours of jet lag would all have been for nothing if this country did not see the receive the Olympic uh, nomination this night. Oh my God! It's uh, yeah, the German civil war is about to break out. Uh, the, he's in Sw he should not be in Switzerland right now. As he walked down the halls of the Swiss, Swiss hotel with his team, donning the finest attire Mexico could offer, he had eyed his, uh, the, ba the bar on his way out in the lobby. If things don't go the way we want tonight, he points at the bottle of booze, turned to his aide. I know where I'll be going. The two shared a ner nervous chuckle. The old Lopez Mateos tended to day uh, in this long in years, he thought to himself, anxiously waiting uh, hours in the International Olympic Committee building as the members cast their votes in secret ballots. The president's headache was lessened uh, by the surge of excitement and adrenaline that slowly crawled up him as he, each vote was casted. He knew his presidency would be remembered at home for better or worse, though with this vote, such memory would encompass the world stage. Um, the windows of the grandiose building became bedazzled with uh, patterns of orange and pink as the sunset drew near, and the day became a blur for Lopez Mateos, anxiously waiting for the result. When the time came for the selection speech, he didn't register a single war award aside from the last two. Uh, Mexico City, the imperfect dictatorship, applies a new facade. So is that going to be a new event? But yeah, we. Uh, oh, look at that, the imperfect di di dictatorship. Yeah. Uh, uh, the Janus face of the PRI has broken into a smile. Lopez Mateos has arranged to showcase Mexico's progress as the host of the 1968 Olympic Games. Um, the sovereignty and dignity bestowed by the revolution, its rapid development, and the stability and freedom created by its democratic system, with the grasp for international prestige and domestic legacy, is a calculated risk. But the Olympic torches glow could also reveal the fractures in the party, uh, the depths of the violence, corruption, and authoritarianism. Can the PRI's democratic illusion be maintained as the world's eyes turn to Mexico? The El Norte, the, be the bench creaked, bearing the weight of the several too many exhausted braqueros as Miguel Alvarez, is this a project event? No. Uh, sat down to join his companions in the squat bunkhouse. It was hot, human, frankly decrepit, though for now it was home. His eyes, his ear catch the static of the radio nearby, and the uh, static snippets of Secretary Salinas' speech make their way uh, to him as the room falls silence. The age of Mexico's industry being at the whims of others is over. Tens of thousands of jobs to be created by Mexicans for Mexicans. Miguel counts his bills he has in his bag. Five, ten, fifteen... Twelve dollars is all he had for his name since last night when he lost the other twelve he made in the poker match. Are you fixing the pack too, Ed Miguel? His co-worker chimes in with the correct observation. Miguel nods. Me too, friend. Hell, I hear the Yankees plan on getting back of the government for playing around with the Japanese. Miguel read, uh, read between the line, looking around at the dozens of men, pawns the diplomacy. We'll be the first on the chopping block, won't we? Best get ahead of the curve. Uh, I'll make a pause... And let's let's check how Mexico's doing. A tapato. Let's see. Can we can we do something right here? Oh, uh, locked. I don't really want to do this because we got a the ten. Maybe we could do this. Oh no. I I don't know how this mechanic works. 
I might have to mess around, but we are we are approaching rapidly the German Civil War. I don't know if that'll have any effect. It probably won't. But yeah, th this is all gonna explode next episode. With that, Nick D4 VIS. I'll see you guys next time.